Motel, my friend. <laughs> <Royal> <laughs> <Shook> Motel. Yeah! <laughs> Pete, we're finally gonna do some musky fishing. Isn't that amazing? What is it? Like it's July. July. Mid-July. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not quite mid-July. Well, we're getting right after it today. Yes. Gonna have an evening. Hopefully we keep a few clouds. Maybe get a little raindrop. I believe we have a major coming as well. Could be good. We're laughing here because we're trying to do something on top water and sound and we have a boat behind us, but that is the topic. This is the Livingston Walking Boss. I'm gonna demonstrate one other lure, but the speed of the retrieve is extremely important to get the right sound. And then to a certain extent, Maybe be triggering the fish after you may see one coming. Now this walking boss here, this is kind of the sound that you want. Okay, so you could hear kind of that plop plop and the click click of the joint there. That sound is what, what you want to maintain on your retrieve. That's where it seems like most of the strikes are going to come when you have that combination of that plop plop and the click click. You can kind of see, you can tell visually when the bait's really working right as well. Uh, that's, that again is what you want on the retrieve to maintain all the way through. But the one big mistake that people make commonly, and I remember this from my guiding days, and I've seen it even recent years, where people just aren't paying enough attention to maintain that during the retrieve. And things that can change that for you very obviously is a little bit of wind. If your boat is pushing away from your surface lure, you have to slow down that retrieve. If you're drifting towards the surface lure, you're gonna have to speed up that retrieve to maintain that proper sound. And then the other thing is, especially if you're not the one that's running the trolling motor, you know, you've got a cast out this way, and then the guy running the boat decides to start pulling forward. Here again, you're gonna have to slow down to maintain that right sound. So that's number one, the biggest thing probably you wanna concentrate on is that. Making sure you maintain that good plop plop, whether it's this bait or a tail bait, it seems like they always have a sweet spot. And then you also, if you do see a fish coming and nothing else is working, that gives you a sound change to possibly trigger that fish. Now one thing I'll say, I'll generally with this particular lure, I'm going to keep the pace exactly the same at first. If I happen to see a fish coming up, and as I get closer to the boat, I'm gonna try a zigzag first before I actually speed up. Usually when you're, you know, 30 feet away, you can change the direction pretty well with these long rods that we use these days. So that's the first thing, say a fish was coming, I may, if he didn't bite on that first zigzag, I may, uh, I may speed up a little bit then as well. And interestingly, even though this bait is a little bit ugly on underwater on the figure eight, we have had them hit underwater as well. And here's a chaos tackle uh, top water here that I've caught quite a few fish on. Just an example of a, a tail bait as well, but most of them just get up. A nice sound, you can hear that plop plop. I gotta shut up for a second. Amazingly, now it's raining too here, so we're gonna have to wrap this tip up. But again, you get you get that right sound. You wanna maintain that through. And then if you see a fish coming, especially with a tail bait like this, you're gonna wanna speed up a little bit, gradually, see how the fish reacts, add that zigzag in there. And then with these baits, you definitely 
want to pull them underneath the surface, especially going into the figure eight with something like the walking boss. I'll generally keep it up on top for the first turn. If the fish doesn't react, then I'm going to take it down. And we got to end this because it's raining. Dave's getting wet.